time! In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines, lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. They left the house at half past nine. The smallest one was Madeline. If you believe you must be big in order to be tough, then you should get to know me. I'll teach you other stuff. If you believe you must be big in order to be tough, then you should get to know her. She'll teach you other stuff. In another old house that stood next door lived Pepito, the son of the Spanish ambassador. Bonjour, Pepito. Hola, Madeleine. Pepito, you look so sad. What is the matter? Oh, Pepito, my son, do not look so sad. You will like living in London. London? You are moving to London? See, si, Madeleine, today, and I must leave Pablito the cat here. I must leave my whole menagerie here. My mother has developed an allergy. <laughs> An ambassador may not have to pay the rent, but he has to move to wherever he's sent. little girls all cried. Ooh, ooh, we'd like to go to London too! In London, Pepito just picked at his dinner. Soon he grew thin, and then he grew thinner. And when he began to look like a stick, his mama said, My, this boy looks sick. I think Pepito is lonely for Madeline and his Parisian friends. His papa called Paris. Hello, Miss Clavel. My little Pepito is not at all well. He misses you, and he is lonesome for Madeline and the little girls next door. They miss him too. Please, come and visit. There is plenty of room. And Pepito's birthday is coming up soon. Merci beaucoup, Seigneur. What a lovely invitation. <laughs> Quick, darlings, pack your bags, and then we will get out to the airport and catch the next plane. Que bien, mi Pepito. Your appetite has returned. That is 
because Madeline is coming to visit. Fill the house with lovely flowers. Fly our flag from all the towers. For Pepito's birthday bake, the most wonderful birthday cake. Place 12 beds into straight lines. This last one will be Madeline's. My friends are coming to London. My friends are coming to London, to London, to London. Now everything is fine. Pack your things, no time to waste. Off to the airport, haste, haste, haste. We'll take a toothbrush and our hats and leave some milk for Pepito's cat. Au revoir, old house, farewell, green vines. Goodbye, dear beds in two straight lines. We are going to London. Revoir, Mrs. Murphy. And while we are away, please get someone to trim the hedges and cut the grass. Merci. Merci. We are going to London. We are going to London. To London, to London. Now everything is fine. They are coming to London. They are coming to London. We are going to London. Pepito's birthday. We have brought no present. What shall we get him? Why, everybody knows, of course. He always said he craved a horse. A horse? Mon Dieu! I do not think we can afford a horse. In their little purses and in Miss Clavel's bag, there wasn't enough money to buy the cheapest nag. Well, we will just buy something else. You are right, mes petites. In London, we may be able to get at least a retired horse as a pet. We will look. So they went to the stables where they found a horse that was gentle, strong, and sound. Let us get this one! <laughs> But Madeline, he is too old, too ugly, too slow. He is perfect, you will see. <laughs> Some poor old horses are made into glue, but not this one. Soon he was good as new. They reached the embassy at midday. Pepito saw them and ran out to say, <laughs> Madeline! Madeline! <laughs> que alegria! You have come just in time for my birthday! Welcome, Welcome to, to London! London. Pepito named him Piccadilly, and he spoke to the horse, which to some might sound silly. Ah, Piccadilly, your coat looks so clean and shiny. I think it is time we went for a birthday ride. Come on, Madeline. Just then, a trumpet blew. Oh, Madeline, Pepito! 
Piccadilly jumped up and off he flew over the wall to take his place at the head of the Queen's Guards, which he had always led. has run away with them. Come, children, <gasps> we must find them in London town. We look high and low in London town. There's London Bridge not falling down. Oh, dear, they're gone. We'll keep they go. We'll search this town. Minster Abbey will search and then we'll inspect our friend Big Ben. Oh dear, they gone, where did they go? We'll search this town of high and low. The huge high park we will explore, then we'll peek inside a giant store. To get around. Oh dear, they gone. Where did they go? We search this town from high and low. Careful, girls, watch your feet. Look right before you cross the street. Oh dear. of you to visit me. Now won't you stay and have some tea? Oh dear, they can't, where did they go? In search this town of high and low. Oh dear, they can't, where did they go? We search this town of high and low. It is too that Madeline and Pepito missed all the fun. But of course they had been having a wonderful time, for in the royal parade they headed the line. The birds had seen all this before, but they were glad of an encore. Look! Regardez! It is Madeline! And Pepito too! <gasps> then it became really grand. There was a mascot and his band. The people below were stout and loyal, and those on the balcony mostly royal. Majesty. Well, Madeline, you must be rewarded for your honesty. I award you the Medal of the Crown. <gasps> Merci, Your Majesty. The show was over. It was getting dark in the town and in the park. Everyone went home with tales to tell about the little girl who was given a medal. They arrived home just in time to eat, at a table full of birthday treats. We love our bread, we love our butter, and, and most of all, all, we love Pepito! Happy birthday, Pepito! Happy birthday! Thank you! Gracias! Merci! And there is no better birthday present than to be with my friends! <laughs> 
You make me very sleepy. Very happy. I think it is time for us all to go to sleep. Everyone had been well fed. Everyone was in their bed. Only one was forgotten, and he'd been on his feet all day long without anything to eat. In his cottage that was thatched, wearing trousers that were patched, was Simon the gardener, who loved flowers, especially in the morning hours, when their faces, fresh with dew, smiled at him. Oh, do you do? Simon, who was never late, opened up the garden gate. <gasps> then he dropped his garden hose. There wasn't a daisy or a rose. All my work and all my care for naught. Oh, this is hard to bear. Where is my celery? Where are my tomatoes? Have you seen my beans and peas? Or the apples on my trees? My fruits and flowers are all gone. Without them, I can't carry on. Oh, oh me, oh my, what can I do? I'm very sad, boo hoo, boo hoo. I had them on the windowsills. My lovely flowers are all gone. Without them, I can't carry on. Oh, me, oh, my, what can I do? I'm very sad, boo hoo, boo hoo. Just like a volcano eruption, they followed the trail of destruction. Just when they thought their efforts were in vain, they spotted a familiar name. Oh, look who is lying there, with his feet up in the air. I feel his breath, he is not dead yet. Oh, vid, vid, Pepito, get the vet. Dr. Stone came quickly by. She checked Piccadilly's heart and eyes. Don't worry, he is only asleep. Help me get him on his feet. As a diet, there is nothing worse than green apples and roses for an old horse. Promise me that when you take him away, you will feed him only grass and hay. Just we cut grass and hay for Piccadilly. No green apples. Mm. Mm. 
When they returned to the embassy of Spain, Pepito's mother was crying tears like rain. Dear lady, we beg your pardon. It seems the horse has eaten up your garden. A little sunshine, a little rain, and it will be beautiful again. Pepito's mother said, Quite so, quite so. Still, I am afraid the horse must go. Achoo! 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 My allergy is back. What else can I do? Then Madeline cried, I know what to do. Pepito, let us take care of him for you. Well, I suppose that would be nice. I always wanted a horse. And just in case you're feeling down, Pepito, you may keep my medal of the crown. Happy birthday, mon ami. Oh, thank you, Madeline. Gracias, Madeline. Soon it was time to get on the plane. The girls promised they would come back again. Fasten your seat belts. In half an hour, you will see the Eiffel Tower. The very best part of any journey by car, by bus, by plane, is when the trip is over and you are home again. Bonjour, Mrs. Murphy! Look what we've brought back from London. We will never have to find someone to cut the grass again. <laughs> The girls had dinner, and they were fortunately able to be 13 at the supper table. We love our bread, we love our butter, but most of all, we love each other. <laughs> they brushed his teeth after he was fed, and covered him up, and put him to bed. Good night, little girls. Thank the Lord you are well. And now, go to sleep, said Miss Clavel. And she turned out the lights and closed the door. There were 12 upstairs, and below, one more. And that's all there is. There isn't any more. <laughs> Then you should get to